Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of the series on this book, The Elements of Coordinate Geometry. So, The Elements of Coordinate Geometry is a very famous book, as I discussed in the previous uh, session. And I'm going to cover the videos of all the theories and the questions related to this. In the previous day, we started off with this chapter, that is, Coordinates lengths of straight lines and areas of triangles. So mainly what we focused on is the part related to coordinates. Mainly what we focused on is the part related to coordinates. Okay, this one. And lengths of straight lines and areas of triangles. Okay, this is what we are going to find out. So today what we are going to mainly focus on is this part. That is lengths of straight lines. So the first thing to know uh, for lengths of straight lines, okay, when you have a straight line, let's say like this, okay, you generally find out the length between two points, okay? So this is, let's say, a point A. This is, let's say, a point B. Okay, you generally measure the distance between any two given points, okay? And that is exactly what we are going to cover in today's session. That is exactly what we are going to cover in today's session. That is distance between two points. Okay. Or, you know, you must have learned it in your school as something called the distance formula. You must have learned this in your school. Okay. However, see, in this book, there is a different approach of how this formula is derived. Okay. However, I am going to sh share both the approaches, the normal approach, which is for rectangular uh, coordinate system. And another one is for oblique axis. Okay. We are going to do this. We are going to find out the distance formula when there is this rectangular coordinate system. Okay. And we are also going to do this formula when there is oblique axis with omega in between. Okay, so let's get started with the first uh, aspect that is distance formula in a rectangular coordinate system. So what we are going to do, we are going to first of all assume the x-axis and y-axis to be perpendicular. Okay, let me give a small heading to this as well. So what we are going to find out is the distance formula. Okay. Uh, this is for rectangular coordinate system. Okay, the distance formula for rectangular coordinate system. Now, what does distance formula exactly talk about? Okay, so when we talk about distance formula, what we are willing to find is, you know, this is basically to find the distance between any two given points, okay? Only when you know two points, okay? You can find out the distance of the, mm, uh, distance between the two points, okay? So first of all, we are going to find it out for the rectangular coordinate system, okay? So let's uh, get our axis ready. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's say this is the y axis. Okay, and let's say this is the x axis. I'm just assuming for the sake of simplicity, okay, that the two points that we are finding out is in the first quadrant. Okay, there is no hard and fast rule as you need to take it in the first quadrant itself. Okay, you can take it in any quadrant you want. Okay, the formula is always going to be applicable and it's always going to apply. Okay. However, just for the sake of simplicity, we are going to uh, derive the formula, derive the distance formula, uh, assuming that the two points are in the first quadrant itself. Okay. So let's assume two points, first of all. Okay. The first point is over here, let's say. Okay. This point is, let's assume this point to be equal to some Okay, two points, let's say one is P1, another one is P2, okay? So what we are going to do, we are going to assume the coordinates of P1 and P2. 
let's say the coordinates of p1 is x1 comma y1 what does that mean that basically means that on the x axis we have moved by x1 distance okay this point over here is x1 if this is 0 okay then this point is x1 that is you have moved a total distance of x1 in the direction of positive x axis okay similarly for p2 okay let's assume that this point is x2 comma y2 okay what does that mean that basically means that this point over here is x2 and this distance is x2 okay similarly on the same ground okay we can say that this distance okay this point over here is y2 and this distance is basically y2 we have moved y2 distance in the y axis okay similar to that let's assume the thing for uh, p1 as well okay this point over here is going to be y1 and this distance is going to be equal to y1 okay so what we are going to find out we are going to find out the distance between the two points okay which two points we are talking about we are talking about the distance between this point to this point okay this is the distance that we are going to find out okay let's assume that this distance is t for now okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to extend i'm going to extend this line on this side and let's say this point is r okay let's say this point is some m1 and this point is some m2 okay now can you tell me what is this angle over here this uh, angle p1 r p2 what is that angle this is going to be of course 90 degrees okay because you can see we are working in a rectangular coordinate system and basic geometry says this too okay so clearly from this we can say that triangle p1 r p2 is a right angled triangle and everybody knows that famous theorem which is related to the right angle triangles what is that famous theorem that famous theorem that i'm talking about is the pythagoras theorem okay so we can apply pythagoras theorem okay so applying pythagoras theorem in this triangle okay what we are going to get we are going to get something of this sort that is p1 p2 square is equal to p1 r square plus p2 r square this is the pythagoras theorem right so p1 p2 we are already familiar with that is my d square and d is what we need to find out okay now p1 r square plus p2 r square now what we need to do is we need to find out what is the value of p1r and what is the value of p2r you see p1r if you carefully look this is nothing okay this uh, p1r is nothing but p1m1 minus rm1 do you see that and p1m1 is nothing but the distance y1 and rm1 is nothing but the distance y2 okay so p1r over here is going to be equal to y1 minus y2 okay similarly okay similarly you can see so this distance is y1 minus y2 we want to find out this distance okay what about this distance what is what is going to be this distance equal to okay similarly you can see that p2r is nothing but uh it, it is nothing but you know this uh this distance that is om1 minus this distance that is om2 okay om1 minus om2 right and that is going to give me this distance which is x1 minus x2 
And if this distance is x1 minus x2, then this one must also be equal to x1 minus x2. Okay, so similarly, we can prove that P2R is x1 minus x2. Okay, so from here, what I'm getting is d square is equal to P1R, which is y1 minus y2 whole square plus x1 minus x2 whole square. So from here, we are going to get d is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square. You can also write this as, you can also write the same as, you can interchange x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square, you can interchange, there, there is going to be no harm. Okay, so this formula that you see is basically known as the distance formula. Okay, this formula that you see is known as the distance formula and this formula is applicable in the rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, I hope this is absolutely clear. So, this formula should be by hearted, okay, remembered by every student, okay, that is D is equal to the difference of the abscissas whole square plus the difference of the uh, ordinates whole square and you take a square root of that. That is going to be the distance formula to find out the distance between any two points, okay. As a note, you can write this down, that is, the formula, okay, this is applicable, okay, this is applicable for all quadrants, okay. So, it is not quadrant specific, even though I have, uh, you know, found out the formula from the first quadrant. However, this formula is applicable to all the quadrants, okay. There is no change in the formula if the points lie in any other quad quadrants. There can be intra-quadrant points, that is like both within the same quadrant, like in this example. There can be inter-quadrant points as well, where one uh, point might be in, let's say, first quadrant, another point might be in, let's say, third quadrant. You can easily still find out the distance between those two points just by using this formula over here. Okay. So, so what you can, what we can do is let's take a small example and see that how this works. Okay. So let's say this is the y axis. This is the x axis. Okay. Let's mark this. Okay. Now let's say that one point over here is let's say 2 comma 3. And another point over here is let's say, um, minus 4 comma minus 1 okay i want to find out the distance between these two points to find out the distance between these two points okay this is the line which is joining these two points now if the, this is the line which is joining these two points i want to find out the distance between them okay if the distance between them is d okay then we can find out d is equal to root over of what is x1 and x2? Let's say this is x1, this is y1. Let's say this is x2 and this is y2. Okay. x1 minus y, x1 minus x2. What is that going to be? 2 minus minus 4. Okay. Whole square plus y1 minus y2. Okay. That is 3 minus minus 1 whole square. Okay. So we can easily find out this distance that is square root of 2 plus 4 6 this is going to be 36 plus here 3 plus 1 is 4 4 square is 16. So d is equal to root over of 36 plus 16 and 36 plus 16 is uh, going to be equal to root over of 52 okay. So, root 52 is going to be the uh, answer, okay? Root 52 units is the answer. You can write this in a better manner. As you know, 52 is nothing but 13 times 4, okay? So, 4 into 13. So this 4 will come out. So, this is going to be 2 root 13, okay? 2 root 13 units is going to be the distance between these two points, that is, 
2 comma 3 and minus 4 comma minus 1. I hope this is absolutely clear and it is very easy as well. Okay. So now we come to the to the part which you may not know. Okay. Many teachers do not teach this. Many textbooks also do not use this because we generally deal with rectangular coordinates. Okay. The uh, oblique coordinates are generally not used. But however, I'll just show you that how the distance formula changes when we are going to use any oblique axis. All right. So let's get started with that. Okay. So what we are going to do now is to find out the distance formula. Okay. This is for oblique axis. Okay, when the system of oblique axis is there at that time, what is going to be the distance formula? Okay, so let's assume that this is the x axis. Okay, and let's assume that, uh, you know, let's say this is how the y axis looks like. Okay, and just for the sake of this, let me just make it a little larger. Yeah. All right. So here you can see that, you know, this is going to be my X axis. This is the origin and this is going to be my Y axis. Okay. All distances are going to be measured. You know, any distance to a point is measured parallel to the X axis or parallel to the Y axis. Okay. Now, suppose again, let's say that this is point P1. Okay, and the coordinate of this point is x1 minus y1. And let's say there is this point P2. Again, the coordinate of this point is x2 comma y2. Okay, what does this mean? This basically means that, you know, for P2, if I draw a line which is parallel, okay, if I draw a line which is parallel to the y-axis, then this point is going to be x2. And similarly, Okay, if I draw a line parallel to the y-axis, this point is my x1. Okay, this point is x1. And similarly over here, okay, if you join this point, this is going to give you y2. And if you join this point, this is going to give you y1. Okay, what we require, we want to find out the distance between these two points. And let's assume again, the distance between these two points is d over here. Okay, let's assume that the distance between these two points is d over here and this point is r as usual. Okay, clearly again, I'm not going through it again. Okay, however, you can easily see, you can easily see that this distance is nothing but y1 minus y2 and this distance is nothing but x1 minus x2. I hope this is clear to everybody. Right. I hope this is clear to everybody. Uh, so just, uh, you know, just to be clear once again, since this is of the initial days of our course. Okay. So this distance is Y2. Okay. So look how, how they're measured parallel to the Y axis. And this distance is Y1. I'm sure you're like, you can interpret this because you have taken courses in geometry before in your school. Okay, and this is what x1. Okay, just to be clear. All right. So now, now over here, look into this triangle. Okay, look into this triangle P1, P2, R. Okay. So here I'm going to apply a property. Okay, here I'm going to apply a property. But before that, do you remember what is this angle? This angle is considered as omega. Okay, if this angle is omega, then what is going to be this angle? This angle is also going to be omega. How? Corresponding angles. Right? Now, if this angle is omega, then what is going to be this angle over here? This angle is also going to be omega. Why? Alternate interior angles. Right? Okay, parallel lines are there. So, look into this part okay i'm gonna i my angle of interest is this angle 
this is the angle which is which i am interested in now this angle is simply going to be what this is simply going to be 180 degree minus omega okay because they are what because they are a linear pair okay they're a linear pair all right so from here we have already concluded that angle p1 r p2 is equal to 180 degrees minus omega okay now what we are going to do is we are going to apply something called the cosine rule in that triangle p1 p2 r okay so let's before we proceed with the proof of this i want to give you a brief idea about what cosine rule says okay so here let's have a small idea about the cosine rule okay there is something called the cosine rule in trigonometry okay this is going to be taught to you when you learn trigonometry and there is this chapter called solution of triangles okay or properties of triangles in that chapter you generally come across this formula which is the cosine rule so what exactly is this cosine rule so let's say that you have a triangle like this okay let's say that you have a triangle okay let's draw it again okay let's say that you have a triangle like this okay let's say this is point a this is point b this is point c okay the side which is opposite to angle a is denoted by small a the side which is opposite to angle c is denoted by small c and likewise this is going to be denoted by small b okay so now this angle is angle a this angle is angle b and this angle is angle c now according to the cosine rule there are three statements okay i'm not going to prove it okay but you should know it as of now okay later on when we do trigonometry maybe okay we can do this also i'm assuming that you have some prerequisite knowledge of trigonometry before you are taking this course anyway so a square can be written as b square plus c square b square plus c square minus 2bc into cos of a okay it is going to be b square plus c square minus 2bc minus 2bc into cos of a okay then similarly b square is nothing but c square plus a square minus 2 times of c into a multiplied by cos b okay and c square is nothing but it is going to be a square plus b square minus 2 a b into cos of c all right i hope this is clear to everybody okay so these are the these are the statements that you need to remember and this is known as the cosine rule we are going to apply the cosine rule to find out the value of d in the uh, in the previous formula so here what i need to do is i need to find out the value of d okay so what we will do is we are going to apply cosine rule in triangle p1 r p2 okay we are going to apply the cosine rule in triangle p1 r p2 so what we are going to get we are going to get if you carefully look over here then p1 p2 square is equal to p1 r square plus p2 r square plus or rather it should be negative minus of two times p1 r into p2 r into cos of angle p1 r p2 okay now we know the values of all of these things 
P1, P2 is something that we are going to find out. That is D square. P1R is nothing but Y1 minus Y2 whole square. And P2R is nothing but X1 minus X2 whole square minus 2 times X1 minus X2 into Y1 minus Y2 multiplied by cos of 180 degree minus omega. Let me write it down over here. Cos of 180 degree minus omega. Okay. Now, what is cos 180 degree minus omega? If you remember this, cos 180 degree minus theta is negative of cos theta. Okay. Yeah, another trigonometry property which you should be uh, aware of. Okay. All right. So, the formula then turns out to be d square equals to x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square plus 2 times x1 minus x2 into y1 minus y2 cos of omega. Do you see that how I have replaced 180 degree minus omega with just cos omega and here this sign has changed. Okay. If you carefully see here the sign has changed. Okay. Note that. All right. So, hence the formula that I am finding out from here is that d is equal to the square root of a big one x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square plus 2 times x1 minus x2 into y1 minus y2 into cos of omega into cos of omega all right yes so, so let me do a dotted line all right so this over here is the distance formula for oblique axis okay all right one more small observation that i would like to show you over here is that uh, if you carefully see if you carefully see so the formula that we found out d is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square plus 2 times x1 minus x2 into y1 minus y2 multiplied by cos of omega. Okay, this is the formula that I have found out. Now, in case of rectangular coordinate axis, okay, in case of rectangular coordinate axis, what is the value of omega? Omega is equal to 90 degree and we know that cos of omega is going to be cos 90 degrees and cos 90 degrees is nothing but it is equal to 0. Okay. So, putting omega equal to 90 degree in the above formula, what are you going to get? You are going to get d is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square. And this formula over here is the same as uh, the distance formula, okay, that we derived for the rectangular coordinate axis, okay. So, this is a small observation that you should be uh, noting down, okay. Now, there's a small corollary which has also been uh, discussed. See, the corollary is extremely easy. It basically says that, uh, let's say that you have a, you have your x-axis, rectangular axis again, I'm taking. Okay, so you have your x-axis and y-axis over here. This is x-axis. This is your y-axis. This is zero. Okay, so this is the origin, zero comma zero. Let's consider any point. Okay, let's consider any point over here. Let's say this is P, which is x1, comma y1. Okay, I want to find out the distance between them. Okay, so if we want to find out the distance between them, again we can apply the. We can again apply the distance formula. 
Okay, the distance formula this time is going to be x1 minus 0 whole square plus y1 minus 0 whole square. I hope you have understood why I have put 0 because, you know, x2 and y2 are these which are equal to 0. Okay, we are putting x2 is equal to 0. We are putting y2 is equal to 0. So the distance becomes square root of x1 square plus y1 square. Okay, always remember this uh, this particular concept over here okay so this is a small corollary that we have that is the distance of the point x1 comma y1 from the origin is square root of x1 square plus y1 square okay so this is nothing but the distance of the point x1 comma y1 from the origin okay and this is nothing but square root of x1 square plus y1 square all right and we have proved this by uh, putting x2 equals to 0 and y2 is equal to 0 so this completes our discussion on the distance formula okay so we have covered article number 20 and 21 from sl Loney. Okay, in the next class, we are going to discuss uh, article number 22, which basically talks about the section formula. Okay, and then after that, we are going to discuss all the examples which are given in the book along with uh, the exercise problems. All right, so these are the things that we are going to do in uh, the next class. All right. Uh, that will be the end of today's class. Thank you for watching. Do revise. And if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the comment box. I will try to reach out to each and every one of you and uh, get your queries resolved. All right. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and goodbye.